Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Before I discuss today's case, I'd like to mention my personal suspense book series, which is Never As It Seems. The first book in this series is available on Amazon, and you can read it on any device on the Kindle app for free. So if you're interested, the link will be in the description box below. Today, I'll be discussing the unsolved murder of Booker Lewis. As I researched this case, I found it to be very heartbreaking and disheartening. Booker was just going about his day, and all of a sudden, his life is taken just like that. There is a reason why he was killed, and it's definitely not a good reason. But that reason hasn't been revealed for so many years. Now, I encourage you all to do your own research with this case and not to just look at my video for all of the information. Here we go. Booker Lewis was born on September 10th of 1921. He was described as a man who was compassionate, loving, kind. He was a husband to a woman named Flossie. He was known as a family man. He was a father of two and a grandfather. Booker was a World War II veteran, he loved being a gym teacher, but around the 1980s he was already retired and worked at his own bail bonds business after retirement. Booker also served as the deacon and Sunday school teacher at his church and he was known to be active in his community. On September 19th of 1984, Booker is 63 years old at this point, and he leaves his house around 7 p.m. to run some errands by getting some medicine at the local drugstore and getting gas, then heading to work at his office. After Booker left home that night, his wife and loved ones would never see him alive ever again. Between 7.30 and 10 p.m., Booker misses a phone call from home since he was getting really late coming back home, and he wasn't contacting anyone. At first, Booker's wife Flossie wasn't really too worried about this, since there would be times he would have to go ahead and work late at night. But when he didn't answer the phone call, that's when she began to worry. She knew Booker would have called to let her and the family know if he were running late. Since Booker never called or came back home, his niece Nellie, who actually did live with Booker and his wife Flossie at their house, went to his office to check up on him. What she found in her uncle's office was something so horrific that no one should ever have to experience. When she went into that office, she found that it was pretty much unlocked and on the floor, she finds her uncle Booker dead on the ground. Of course, when she sees that her uncle is not responsive, she immediately calls 911. The police are notified. And I just can't imagine the burden that Nellie felt to be the one to not only find him like that, but to also let I would assume that she was the one who let the rest of the family know that Booker was no longer alive and that he lost his life in such a brutal, senseless way. And I can imagine that the family was definitely devastated to hear about the details of Booker's sudden death. Booker's cause of death was by being shot in the chest the night before his niece Nellie found him since witnesses said that they did hear a gunshot around 8 p.m. But my question is this, like, why wouldn't you just call 911 or the cops when you heard the gunshots then and there? Like, I don't know what was going on there in their, you know, minds at that moment. But doing further investigation, the police did believe that the weapon was a 38 caliber handgun. Here is the strange detail about Booker's death. When Booker was found dead, his wallet and jewelry were still on him, 
and nothing in his office was taken or even messed with. So again, like, you know, when Nelly came in, the door was already unlocked. So there was like really like no forced entry or struggle. After getting these details, it seems to me that Booker was specifically targeted. Yet after all of these years, no one has found a reason why. Like again, like he was a family oriented and a community centered man. I don't understand why someone would want to take his life like that unless it was truly a robbery gone wrong. If this case wasn't devastating enough, what also devastates me is that his wife Flossie passes seven years later and she never knows about who exactly took her husband away from her. If you have any information on this case and you're watching this video, please be a snitch. Call 911 or the Panhandle Crime Stoppers whose number is 850-785-8477. There is a $25,000 reward. It's almost been 40 whole years since Booker senselessly had his life taken away from him. Once again, it is such a shame that his wife loses her husband, then passes away several years later without knowing who took her husband away from her so soon and why. Now, I'm sure that his children and even grandchildren miss him every single day. They just lost him like so soon and it's such a shame that they had gone on for this long without much of any answers at all. Though his case has grown extremely cold, Booker's life will never be forgotten. I'm praying that God provides them with the answers that they've been searching for all of these years. The God that I serve, the God of the Bible, is a God of justice. He knows exactly who took Booker's life and will make sure that justice is served. I thank you all for taking the time here today to watch this video. If you did like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. If you have any thoughts on this case at all, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. If there is a certain true crime case that you'd like me to cover, go ahead and let me know. I will see y'all for next true crime Tuesdays and I will talk to y'all later.